name is Whitney. Um, so as Greg said, it's obviously a very exciting time for Bumble at the moment. You've just launched Bumble Biz, um, which is all about uh, professional networking in the same kind of female first way that, uh, that people know and love the, the dating app Bumble. Um, I mean, why did you decide that Bumble should go into professional connections? So, do, is this, can everyone hear me? Okay, good. Um, so, what we saw happen with our platform, and for those of you who are not familiar, we launched back in 2014 as a female first dating app. So, when two people for heterosexual matches um, connected, women had to make the first move and they had 24 hours to do so. A lot of people early on said, oh, this is a gimmick, this is just another dating app where you're just changing one little thing. Um, but it really was so much more than that. It was really turning gender dynamics on its head. And if you look at traditional um, ways of connecting for women, um, we're placed at a disadvantage. Men are expected to be the aggressors, to be in control, to go after the woman. And on the flip side of that, women are told to um, sit on their hands, to run away from that, to be, um, you know, not, not very interested. And so it creates this imbalance where you set the man up to be rejected, and this can translate into anger. And then, as we all know, when you introduce a profile or a screen into that equation, the rejection can translate into very abusive behavior. So when we introduced that in 2014, it really changed the dynamics of how women felt and how they were being treated online. And something amazing started to happen. Women realized this behavior was helping them connect in a way that they felt safe and they were having positive interactions. So they started taking to the platform to do things beyond dating. And we saw women were looking for friendships. We introduced a friend finder. But why we introduced networking, we saw hundreds of thousands of, of profiles um, where women were saying, I'm married, I have kids, I've just moved to a new city, I would love to make professional connections. And it was because there was a shield. The women could make the first move. They weren't being bombarded. Just the way they were not being bombarded on the dating side, they weren't being solicited um, for professional endeavors either. And so it was a natural evolution for the brand to really extend connections beyond just dating. So um, I can understand, obviously, from the dating perspective, that um, very clear kind of gender imbalance just from sort of conventional gender roles and, and men expected to be more forward. Um, but in professional networking in particular, I mean, why do women need like, a special alternative to, say, LinkedIn, which obviously is, is one of the major professional networking platforms? So unfortunately, connecting is not just about love. And gender dynamics are not exclusive to one form of, of connection. And just like we see a lot of sexism or imbalance with gender dynamics in, in romantic endeavors, it exists in the workplace as well. It exists when it comes to networking. It exists in professional connecting. And a lot of women, and again, Link, LinkedIn is an incredible platform and it serves a really interesting purpose, but this is kind of twofold. So first of all, LinkedIn is not like the traditional dating app. We have evolved technology to be able to um, introduce you to people in your area within minutes. I mean, we, you could take the app out right now and have somebody be here in 20 minutes to have a coffee with you. LinkedIn does not serve that purpose. So you had that, that lack of um, kind of hyper-locality that LinkedIn doesn't serve. But what happens on platforms like LinkedIn is very similar to what happens on other dating platforms where men um, have been known to abuse the system, if you will and solicit women for endeavors that are not professional. Professionally speaking, you're very beautiful. That's not professional. This happens to women every day, all day. And so by building in a natural evolution in, in the vertical of, of networking, we allow our technology to scale beyond love. And that is needed um, in, in the way we connect. There is not a social platform today that is based on giving you access to people you don't know. Facebook, LinkedIn, incredible platforms. But they serve you in a way that keeps you in touch, not necessarily in a way that puts you in touch with someone new. And so when women make the first move in professional endeavors, they control the conversation. They are in control of their voice. They're treated as equals. And there's no denying um, that this is probably, you know, um, one of the most vocal times in modern history that we've all kind of looked in the mirror and said, what is going on when it comes to professional behavior? 
And so one of the, the, uh, the kind of key reasons for Bumble's success, I suppose, and one of the things that you really work hard on is um, limiting potential abuse and, and harassment on the platform. This is obviously something that's very widespread across social media and is a big problem on many platforms. Why, why do other sites seem to have so much difficulty preventing it? So I think that what's fascinating about the way these social networks have taken on a life of, them, of their own, and they, they govern a lot of our behavior, right? This is how we operate throughout the day. And if you as a company that have you know, the responsibility to millions of users, at this point we have um, close to 24 million registered users. That's a lot of people that we can have a positive impact on. We want to approach this from a perspective saying, we don't necessarily believe that you should be able to speak and behave however you want if it's impacting others in a negative way. We are choosing as a company and as a brand to do our part to say, this is a platform rooted in kindness. This is a platform rooted in respect. We will not allow hateful behavior. We will not allow uh, misogynistic behavior to take place here. And we feel it's our duty to try and reconfigure some of this digital behavior that is otherwise pervasive with um, nastiness and, and, and bad behavior. And so I think it really falls upon us as a company and our leadership to say, we have to start from the top and we have to start from um, user first. And we have to make sure that we actually build this into our, not only our product, but in how we um, you know, really hold true to our values day to day operationally. So do you think it's just a lack of will uh, on behalf of the other sites that they, they haven't managed to stamp out the kind of abuse that, that goes on? I think it's a decision a lot of companies are faced with. Are they going to completely allow every form of freedom of speech? Or are they going to say, hey, that speech is hateful, that speech is wrong, this, this speech is, is hurtful? Um, there's a lot of other platforms out there that I think have been in a very um, interesting debate over this recently. And we've just decided from day one to do it differently. And it's interesting, Bumble, the, the way Bumble even came about was a desire to build a, the, one of the first social networks rooted in positive behavior. Instead of spreading negativity, how can we spread good, positive um, technology? And, and that can translate across the board. Uh, you alluded to earlier, obviously, it's a, a very kind of um, vocal moment at, at the moment for um, this issue of sexism in the workplace and, and harassment in the workplace. And that's something that we've heard many stories this year and recently um, in Silicon Valley and in the tech industry. Um, do you think the tech industry and Silicon Valley has had its Harvey Weinstein moment? Well, I, I think that it's, it's, it's been something that has kind of been confusing to me that we hone in on one industry and we talk about sexism in this industry. Sex, this is a problem that is pervasive across mm -hmm. the board. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, it exists. And I think that, you know, you can't really say has this industry had its Harvey Weinstein moment. I think that the curtain is coming off of a lot of different industries right now. And it goes to show that this is a much bigger problem than the everyday professional might realize. Um, and I think it's just time that we look at behavior across the board. And if we're looking at behavior across the board, we need to be looking at behavior digitally as well. We are spending half of our time in our phone. And I think that this is something that is at the root of how we behave as humans, not necessarily just in one industry. And do, do you think, um, you know, how much can an app like, like Bumble uh, affect that, that issue? Can it really help um, you know, redress the balance? Can it help push for equality? We absolutely believe so. And what we believe is humans behave a certain way and technology gives humans access to continue behaving a certain way, right? It fuels access to opportunity, to reach, to whatever it is that, that they're looking for on that platform. And we feel if we can reconfigure the way that behavior takes place, whereas say a woman matches with a man on Bumble, if she traditionally would have never made the first move, by encouraging her to do so on Bumble can actually have a behavioral shift and it can change the course of, of that conversation, which then turns into a relationship perhaps. And this can have a residual effect. Not only that, but we do believe that complementary behavior and kindness is contagious. And if more platforms can look at how to essentially gamify kindness 
and complementary behavior, you could see a real, uh, real shift in society. I like that idea. It does seem a bit like a kind of utopia, this idea of people actually being nice on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you think it will take to, to genuinely make a difference and, and get to, to that place? I think making it mainstream and making it something that is not niche, something that is not, you know, uh, a fad. I think if we can find a way to actually engineer this to be part of our everyday um, behavior set, not just on Bumble. I would love to see a lot of companies find a way to, instead of make us addicted to certain behaviors on these platforms, how can we become addicted to paying complimentary behavior towards the people we're engaging with? How can we become addicted to wanting to spread kindness and goodness versus putting others down? And, and it's interesting, um, we've spoken to a lot of different psychologists about this, Compliments and kindness, they are contagious behaviors. They are things that, as humans, creates a ripple effect. And so does negativity and, and evil behavior. And I think we've seen a lot of that on a lot of platforms. So my hope is that this next wave of digital connecting and this next wave of social media is, is rooted in, in goodness. So what's next for Bumble? You've um, obviously you started with dating, then you went into platonic friendships among women, uh, then you, now you're in professional networking. Have you got your eye on something else? So I think we have three main verticals. We believe that life is really made up of, of these connections in your life. It's your professional connections, it's your love connections, and it's your friendships. And these are at the, the foundation of your, of your life, right? And we believe that those relationships define your, your mental health, your physical health, your overall, your overall well-being. And so now that we've given you access to add new relationships to your life, how can we go beyond that? How can we keep those relationships healthy and happy? How can we be part of that on a deeper level? So now it's adding context to all of those connections. What do you mean by adding context? So instead of just connecting you and disappearing out of the equation, what we're looking at with our new features is how can we stay a part of that? How can we stay a part of your connections even beyond the match and beyond the chat? How can we keep you on our platform in a way that adds value um, beyond just that initial connection? So evolving into more of a social network, but one that introduces you and then stays with you through and through. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know if it was you who described it this way, but I, I saw it somewhere described as uh, the Facebook for people you don't know. Yes, so we have used that in the past. So to give some context to that, Facebook does an amazing job of keeping us in touch, right? So uh, I'm sure a lot of you in the audience right now are going to post something on Facebook today. That's going to be shared with a network of people you already know. There is not this clear intention on Facebook to add people you don't know yet, but that's the very small, less than 1% of the world that knows one another. What about the, the rest of that? What about the 99%? How can we connect the world to one another with intentions of doing that? Meeting strangers has not been normalized, right? If you look at it, the only normalized behavior when it comes to meeting strangers has been in dating. So how can we apply that technology beyond dating? And how can we make that the social network of, of our future versus just these platforms that keep us in touch with the people we already know. And have you met anyone on Bumble that's become kind of a, a good connection? Yeah, absolutely. We've hired numerous people on Bumble. Um, I've, I've, I've made really great contacts in some of the strangest um, places, you know, looking for good restaurants when I land in a city I've never been to. And that person ends up showing me around a new city that I've, I would have otherwise just stayed at the hotel. Um, Bumble gives you access to opportunity far beyond just a date. And um, it's been really remarkable. Some of the young women we've hired would never have met them in a thousand years. But because the, the, the way we matched on the app, it was hyper-local, they lived in the area, it worked. So it goes to show that this really does provide opportunity beyond just, just love. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Whitney. Thank um, you. I'm thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next uh, for Bumble. Thank you. Thanks.